All right, hello. And thank you for joining our webinar today on improving customer experience with Omnichannel. We have a great panel here with us today with a variety of real life experiences that they'll be sharing with all of us. We'll start off by giving some brief introductions of the panel and then we'll jump into our top tips for Omnichannel success. Uh, we'll also do a product demo and Q&A section at the end. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, you can submit them at any time through the Zoom panel, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. We're also recording this presentation, and we'll be uploading it to our YouTube channel later today. We'll also be sending it out to all the attendees and registrants later today via email. Great, so to get started on some introductions, my name is Shelby Bozakowski. I'm the marketing manager at Bright Pattern, and I'm gonna be moderating today's webinar. Our industry experts today include Emily Vince, Senior Product Marketing Manager of Zendesk, and Sergey Menchikov, Senior Vice President of Product Management at Bright Pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Emily. Do you wanna go ahead and say hi and tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your experience? Yes, thanks, Shelby. Really happy to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I am um, on the product marketing team here at Sundesk, um, uh, where we build software for better customer relationships. Um, and I focus, I focus mostly on our omni-channel solutions. So I'm really looking forward to, to the discussion today. Great. Thanks, Emily. And Sergey, do you want to also say hello to the attendees? Hi, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, my name is Sergey Menchikov. I'm a product manager at Bright Pattern. My background is in call center contact and case management software. I'm with Bright Pattern since the beginning. Great, thank you, Sergey. And we've also invited some of our customers to discuss real life examples of success stories in their omni channel contact centers. So we have Sean Rivers, Director of Operations Technology at Republic Wireless, as well as Roger Meter, co founder of True Source Labs. And I'd like to do the same thing and kind of pass the mic over to you guys to say hello and let the audience know a little bit more about your contact center operations. Uh, so with that, we'll have Sean from Republic Wireless start. Thank you. Um, so Republic Wireless, we're a provider of consumer, consumer cellular services uh, for value-minded members who, like us, believe that technology should enhance communications with others, like person to person. Uh, we're not so big on person to smartphone. Uh, we believe it's simple, affordable plans, and what they like, we like them to reflect our values, which are to uh, spend time with people, not with our faces and a phone. But um, we believe in being different in how we provide support, and that has really is a big differentiator with us. Uh, we, um, we publish no phone number, we staff no call center, and all support at least begins online via the written word. Uh, so my team, uh, the operations technology team, manages all of the tools and processes to, um, that make this model work. Uh, so we have less than 140 agents uh, supporting hundreds of thousands of recurring mobile uh, phone customers, and our average CSAT's well over 90%. And over 40% of all of our customer interactions actually happen customer to customer. So uh, basically, most of our customers actually answer our own customers' uh, issues. So uh, we are firm believers that priority support, helping the, the neediest, is more important than first in, first out. So a lot of things we'll talk, I'll talk about today, we'll talk about that from that perspective. Thank Great. You. Thanks, John. We're happy to have you. Um, Roger, do you want to go ahead and give a brief intro on True Source Labs? Yeah, TrueSource Labs is a third-party outsource provider, and we specialize in uh, complex support models. So uh, most of our clients are in the IoT space, as well as Apple and the enterprise um, space. And we support uh, all the channels, whether written, social, chat, SMS, uh, email, all the way across the board. Awesome. Thanks, Roger. Great, so now that we've introduced our panel, we're gonna go ahead and jump into our tips for improving customer experience with Omnichannel. And our first, tip, our first tip is to respond to customers on the channel of their choice or on the channel they initially reached out on. So this one can be hard just with the growing number of channels out there. It really seems like there's a new channel popping up every three months and contact centers are struggling to understand what um, channels are necessary and how to implement them into their call center. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Emily just to explain some recent stats from Forrester on the ever-changing omni-channel strategy. 
Um, thanks, Shelby. Yeah, I think that this um, this graph really shows um, some of the challenges that um, companies face given changes in customer behavior and expectations. So these figures are from Forrester Research, a leading technology research firm, and they demonstrate how rapid digital transformation is driving change in customer experiences and expectations. So along the top there, you can see all the usual channels that customers might use to engage with customer service. So, um, you know, the channel we all know and love, voice, and then also some of the emerging channels, FAQs for self-service, email, online chat, community forums, and social channels. So the gray bar, um, that is the percent of U.S. adults that have used that channel to contact customer service back in 2009. And now the nice blue bar there shows a percent of U.S. adults that have used that channel last year in 2017. So I think there are a couple things that are really interesting and worth noting here. The first is that, as you can see, although newer and digital channels like self-service and chat and social media are on the rise, voice is still the most popular channel for support. Um, I know for myself, you know, um, I'm very comfortable using self-service and online chat for help, but sometimes if I need something solved quickly and easily, there's nothing like connecting with the person over the phone. But I also think what's even more interesting is that as companies are expanding their digital footprints with websites and mobile apps, there are more ways to get in touch with companies. So the total volume of touch points a customer has with the company has increased. Um, and so it's not like, um, you know, customer touch points on chat or email are displacing other channels. And customers expect a seamless experience as they move from self-service experience to a phone call to a, chat, to a chat. So they expect companies to know who they are. They don't want to repeat their issues. They expect their interactions with companies to be similar to with how they may interact with friends or family in a way, um, to, to have that personal experience as they shift between channels. Great. Thanks, Emily. That's a great explanation of kind of the omni-channel uh, landscape right now. And uh, with that, um, Sergey, I know um, our customers have some great use cases on responding to customers on the channel of their choice. Do you want to go ahead and um, explain some of those? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, omni-channel is, um, is actually maintaining consistent uh, experience across uh, channels while staying in context. And um, Bright Path and Contact Center with Zendesk is a great combination to keep context across multiple channels. That said, uh, Republic Wireless um, here uh, is actually using a customer channel preference for voice to speed up resolution of specific tickets, uh, thus uh, focusing the effort. Uh, Sean, could you please um, elaborate? Uh? Sure. <coughs> we. Uh... We actually, while we, while we don't have a call center, we, we actually, when we need to, when a resolution would be better served over the phone, we invite our members to a live uh, call uh, at any time at their convenience. We send them a code and they can actually uh, call in and talk to us. So uh, always responding on the challenges of, uh, responding on the channel of choice is a huge challenge for us. Uh, we're a regulated phone company, so it can get, challenging talking about certain topics over social media, but we have all the social media, chat, email, web form. We have all these places uh, that we talk to people and we drive them to tickets whenever possible. But when we need to get in a real time conversation, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we tend to invite our members to a live call and that's that's been a real winner for us. Um, thank you. Uh, Roger, I know TrueSource is offering an uh, omnichannel service uh, to multiple clients, uh, often from the same agent team. Um, could you uh, share examples of services uh, that TrueSource provides uh, to your clients? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, a lot of our uh, clients, of course, are IoT-based, which means they have a phone app um, and, a web, and a website, usually, and they can contact us through support, either SMS or chat or uh, voice. And also those contacts can be, you know, if it's a chat, can be escalated to voice if necessary. The, the agents themselves are supporting those multiple channels. So you know, they may take you know, a chat, then a voice call, then an SMS call. Um, and the experience is very, very similar for, for the agents to be able to handle that. And when you're handling multiple clients on those multiple channels, having that experience be very, very similar, very consistent and important. Thank you, Roger. Great, guys, those were great use cases for that. Um, our, our second tip, 
is to give agents instant access to all data. So as contact centers and new software and channels are added, um, a lot of times technology and data can become siloed in the contact center, which makes it hard for agents to find information easily. Um, so Sergey, um, I'm going to pass it over to Sergey, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the importance of having technology that does provide agents with all relevant information. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shelby. Um, Bright Pattern Contact Center helps agents by uh, running customer phone and uh, their input buys and does data and retrieving necessary, necessary information to be presented as screen pops to agents. It's one of the uh, ways we can bring data quickly. Moreover, in cases when agents um, work on multiple simultaneous chats or other interactions, we switch ticket tabs um, with uh, channel switching so that we keep uh, agents focused on what they were doing. And that's especially helpful when you have multiple chats. It's just a couple of things that uh, uh, the combination of Zendesk and Bright Pipe Contact Center does to help agents for instant data access. Um, Sean, uh, how Republic Wireless promotes agent access to customer data? So uh, since we're, uh, we drive all of our interactions uh, to a ticket, because uh, we have to memorialize our one-to-one -one private communications, um, this allows us to see uh, when a user has engaged more than one channel at a time uh, so that we can cut down one on duplicate tickets and inefficient work. There's a lot of inefficiencies when you have duplicates. Um, so we find that without uh, you know, a phone number, we tend to get a lot of all ports in a storm communication and activity. So combining our channels, uh, providing user account information, usage data helps us kind of stay focused and everything kind of works its way back into a ticket, which really allows us um, really allows us to, to, to focus in and, and get one, interac one interaction with each of our customers. So it's, it's really important to get this data in uh, so that we don't get spread all over the place. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, Roger, and how do you do this uh, in TrueSource? Yeah, through the API, I mean, we, use the, we search customers uh, as well as create tickets. And also within part of our environment, we have a shared uh, client environment, so we're using Bright Pattern with multiple instances of Zendesk, and uh, through the API, we're allowed to, you know, we're able to be able to search customers through those multiple instances of Zendesk as well as pop uh, tickets and present information to the to the agent through those multiple instances, and it makes it uh, much easier on the agent. Um, basically, when the customer calls through, regardless of channel, whether it's SMS, chat, or web, or what have you, uh, the information is presented to the agent so they can move on to the complexity of the call. Thank you, Roger. Great. And our third tip piggybacks off of tip number two. Uh, once agents do have all the relevant data, it is important to personalize interactions in order to improve customer experience. Emily, uh, what are your thoughts on this tip? Emily, I think you might be on mute if you're talking. Uh, thank you, Shelby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we, we, at Zendesk, the, our omni-channel solution really provides um, comp agents with, a complete, um, with complete visibility into full customer journey and history with an organization. So in one platform, in one agent interface, you can see um, uh, at a glance all tickets that you've received from a customer, whether it be via email or chat or phone or even text message. Um, so that's all, uh, all contained in one um, user profile. And you can also completely customize your Zendesk platform um, with, with custom apps to pull in additional information that may empower your agents to be more efficient. Um, so um, not only is Zendesk designed um, to provide that really um, powerful agent workflow, um, but it's also flexible and customizable um, so that teams can provide the information um, that agents need to, to deliver efficient and personal interactions. Great. Thank you, Emily. And what about you, Sergey? Yeah, um, having access to data in and desk to identify the customer and then to get their data really helps. And there are a lot of examples that could be done, such as uh, from starting from greeting by name uh, listing their open tickets uh, um, to things like uh, customer segmentation and prioritization even before the interaction uh, hits agent desktop. Uh, 
Sean, what Republic Wireless uh, uh, take on personalization? I know you're doing uh, some cool things to uh, focus uh, on to to low return. So yeah, we're we look at personalized account information. So we look at the account information as a service provider, uh, you know, in order to be more proactive for our members. So we. We know that most people with issues kind of suffer in silence, and in most cases, we don't know until the day they churn. Uh, so we use uh, number transfer failures, activation failures, call and text failures, and any other service failures that we can find. We're constantly running experiments and proactively create tickets and create uh, interactions. So instead of waiting for them to interact with us, we actually will create interactions, send them out emails, inviting them to call, text them, invite them to call. We've tried many different ways. Um, and they can do this on their own schedule. Uh, in addition, we keep track of the user's technical acumen and their channel preference so that we can reply uh, where and kind of how the member needs us to. So sometimes somebody who is lower technology, we need to be more reassuring. Somebody who is uh, who just loves technology, we need to answer a lot more why questions. And then the person who just doesn't even think about technology, uh, we just need to be you know fast speed and accuracy. Uh, so the the response is very different uh, based on what we know about the member. Thank you, Sean. And Roger, how uh, true source of personalizes interactions? Well, we have a number of clients who have different customer types, if you will, maybe you know VIPs, installers, uh, beta customers, or um, friends of the CEO, or what have you. And uh, those customers need to be routed differently within the contact center. So we look up. Uh, information contained within Zendesk, in this case the organization, um, and make routing decisions based on um, based on the information within. Now, that could change the routing to a special group, uh, special agent, uh, raise the priority of the interaction so it gets an answered faster or a combination of their own. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Roger. Great. And our fourth tip is to empower your agents. So there's actually been a lot of recent reports that prove more empowered and engaged employees increase both customer experience and ROI. Uh, there's actually a report by Gallup that says highly engaged teams achieve on average 10% higher customer satisfaction ratings and bring in 20% more sales revenue than unengaged teams. So Sergey, how do you think companies should empower their agents? Well, there's there's many ways, uh, and um, some of them are within the scope of, of, of our software, and some of them are beyond it. But um, some things that we do, and Bright Pattern Contact Center and Zendesk integration is, uh, we have a special UI that is built into Zendesk, and it's um, very focused to help agents to access data quickly. We reduce noise with uh, presenting only relevant controls at all times, and we also provide them with feedback on their performance um, on the fly. And uh, Sean, what, what do you do in uh, Republic Wireless to empower agents? So we believe, I guess, that uh, trusting and expecting that our agents will be a part of the solution, um, not only on their individual interaction, but for all future interactions. So our agents um, not only are challenged to use our documentation, documentation, but they actually improve it and even create it as needed. So there's a, there's a lot of training, but after the training and some monitoring, um, basically, all the barriers are removed, and the agent can can make real time contributions to our knowledge base. Uh, so this model that we use is called knowledge centered support. Uh, we've been doing this since late last year. Uh, we started off with two hundred and fifty articles written and edited by two people who are uh, doing the yeoman's job trying to get that that done. But we're up to now two hundred uh, two thousand five hundred articles today, written and updated and managed in real time by our by a little over 100 agents actually working and writing articles. Uh, so we feel that if, if agents are empowered uh, to really make a difference, uh, they're going to be a lot happier and, and the members are going to be a lot happier when they have an engaged agent who's actually, uh, you know, has a stake in the game. So. Oh, thank you, Sean. And Roger, I know you have also uh, some training, uh, uh, you mentioned some training angle um, with uh, intro source for Bright Patterns and Desk Combined System. Yeah, I mean, our, our value comes from delivering knowledgeable agents to handle you know, complex technical problems. Um, and we've got to make sure that they have the right tools um, at their disposal to do that. Bright Pattern with the consistent interface um, makes the training for the tool really quite simple so that the agents can concentrate on solving the problem. Thank you, Roger. 
Great, thanks guys. Um, so the fifth tip here is to provide a consistent experience across all channels. Sergey, what are some ways that contact centers can achieve this? Well, the first and foremost, maintaining a context in form of, uh, uh, for example, here in desk tickets, helps with providing consistent experience and the uh, Red Button Contact Center actually helps uh, to access the data fast. Um, so the desk knowledge base and training materials uh, also help uh, a lot in that regard. And Red Button Contact Center can also help um, agent training on chat, for example, by presenting agents with bot suggestions during chat conversations. So just a couple of things that we can do. Uh, Sean, how do you achieve consistency in uh, Republic Wireless? So this is something we actually struggle quite a bit with, um, but KCS has really helped having all of the same documentation used by every single uh, uh, channel that we have. They give the same documentation out. They, they use the same uh, methods everywhere. There are some places where the, the, the mode of discussion may be different. So, it, you know, we don't necessarily want to have the same exact experience because uh, we have our, our kind of our social greeters and our community um, moderators, and they may talk a little bit differently uh, publicly with everybody than somebody when it becomes a private one-to-one -one, uh, solution. So we, we really balance, try and balance that quite a bit. Um, but we're always looking for ways to broaden our channels um, and yet remain the, the asynchronous omni-channel support team that we are today. Thank you, Sean. Roger, and what's the true source approach on this subject? Yeah, for us, it really starts with being able to set up you know, the different channels in a consistent manner, you know, be able to track and report on them in, in a much more consistent manner. Then we can deploy and manage it in a much more consistent manner. And for the agents, that means they have a much more consistent interface to work in, which, you know, makes their work at a higher caliber, more accurate, and just easier to, easier for them to accomplish. Thank you, Roger. Great, and our sixth and final tip is to partner with a flexible vendor that has options for customization. Um, as you all know, implementing an omni-channel strategy can be really hard and it requires a tight partnership with your vendors. Uh, so Emily, do you want to share some unique ways that customers rely on Zendesk in order to provide omni-channel customer support? Um, well, we do know that, um, you know, agility and innovation are critical to, to delivering a differentiated customer experience. So companies need to be able to move fast to adapt to changing customer expectations. So. At Zendesk, we, we deliver customer service best practices and mach machine learning out of the box so that our customers are always on the cutting edge of, um, of customer experience technology and the ease of administrating Zendesk means that businesses can add new channels and make adjustments to business rules in real time based on their customer needs. And that empowers customer service teams to do their best work and focus on, you know, what matters, the customer rather than the, the technology. And then I think, you know, applicable to this webinar, of course, is, is one of our, key, one of our um, secret sauces is our open, modern, extensible platform. So businesses can customize NS to your unique needs and um, – they can embed Zendesk anywhere their customers want to communicate. They can connect Zendesk to key systems like, um, like Bright Pattern, for example, and fully customize Zendesk and make it their own with our flexible APIs. Great. Thanks, Emily. And Sergey, what are your thoughts on this tip? Yeah, um, Bright Pattern Contact Center and Zendesk combination is extremely flexible and customizable. So starting with uh, custom fields, rules, and uh, in the marketplace application in Zendesk to uh, such things as flexible scenarios in Red Button Contact Center and um, a lot of out-of-the-box cloud integrations, such as uh, a number of APIs from IBM Watson built into a Red Button Contact Center. A lot of cool business um, case scenarios can be implemented. So, uh, Sean, I know the Republic Wireless uh, screen the call-in is one of the pretty cool use cases you mentioned about, but uh, anything else uh, uh, you, you can add on this subject? Sure. Actually, um, work flexibility is one of the prime reasons we chose both Zendesk and Bright Pattern. So uh, with Zendesk, it's always been about you know the API, uh, so that we can we can do things uh, custom things that we do because we're different. Uh, SDK, so we can integrate with all of our apps. We have various different apps that our customers have. Uh, custom fields, so that we can we can you know bring in the information that we want to bring in. 
uh, triggers so that we can you know automatically change things on the fly and automations as well so very often when a change happens so I find that most of my solutions um, I can find in their marketplace um, when there's something new brought to us I know that the tools uh, that are there in Zendesk can make pretty much anything possible so I'm usually the least stressed person in a room when there's a new launch or a challenge for support because I know that there's always a way that we can do it. Um, if something needs to be done, there's always some way that we can make it happen. Uh, and then with Bright Pattern, we needed a partner that would help us create, uh, that would work with us to create something. We wanted uh, to take our no call center asynchronous value to phone support and, and take that to a partner that understood our needs and would deeply integrate with Zendesk and was reliable. So we got that in spades from Bright Pattern. They were even excited to help us. I mean we weren't going to be doing a call center and they were excited to work with us on something new and cool. Uh, so what resulted was the ability to invite our members to a call right from a ticket. So our agents basically check a checkbox. It puts a macro in place that invites the member to a call and they call in seamlessly, put in their ticket number and they're in uh, to a queue to talk to a live agent immediately. Um, any time of day, 24 by seven. Um, so this had a serious positive impact on our customer satisfaction. Uh, we originally tried doing scheduled calls and basically people missed those calls. We'd do outbound calls and people wouldn't answer. Um, so we went from about a 35% response rate for calls, for request to call, uh, to over 80%. So pretty big change for us and it was all because we were able to work with a partner that was willing and flexible enough to do what we wanted to do. Thank you, Sean. Roger, I know that True Source is providing a channel services uh, flexibly according to the uh, uh, client's business model. Um, so uh, what are, could you share some details on the flexibility? Yeah, I mean, the, the right pattern is flexibility definitely helps us uh, with implementing our, our business model. Um, as I talked about, we have multiple clients uh, or multiple clients within a shared queue or on multiple instances in desk and the flexibility within bright pattern allows us to, uh, handle all those multi-channels, you know, uh, do different screen pops, different lookups within the different instances of Zendesk, as well as reuse a lot of the information in the background by uh, a lot of the same, using the same scenario to always look up Zendesk information and so on, um, just by passing parameters back and forth to the different scenarios. It makes a very flexible package within that environment where if we had to duplicate it out multiple times, um, it would cause different types of errors and different types of maintenance issues. I think we definitely have a very customized environment in that regard. Thank you, Roger. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear that technology has a large role in providing support over all the channels consumers are using today. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Sergey to share his screen now and do a quick demonstration of Bright Pattern Omnichannel Communication for Zendesk. All right. So, um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. We also, yep, there we go. Yeah, um, so um, Bright Pattern Contact Center is, uh, has a built-in UI in uh, uh, Zendesk, and we also have a built-in soft phone uh, in, uh, for, for phone conversations. So, uh, the UI is, uh, uh, has a, a both uh, telephone and uh, text messaging um, interface and um, let me switch to ready uh, this is the agent interface and um, go ahead and um, contact um, the organization by chat so this is uh, an example customer website with a little chat widget so uh, here um, I'm using IBM Watson bot uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to just give a, a simple response. So um, it, it brought this conversation to agent and it popped the ticket number 228. And so now I'm in chat, I have the chat history. But uh, one other thing that happened is uh, before connecting an agent, it actually retrieved the information about the ticket and uh, showed some of that uh, to, to the customer. So it's possible to do um, 
self-service or any kind of prioritization because we we have the data we we know who the person is and uh, uh, we we can process the information they supply now um because it's an omni-channel system and um, we configure it in such a way that uh, a, a an agent can take a telephone call um, during a single chat. If they would have more than one chat, they wouldn't be able to because uh, their their capacity will be uh, filled um, over over the required threshold. If you are calling about a new case, please press one. Otherwise. Please press 2 to enter an existing case number. Please enter your existing case number, followed by the pound. The status of the ticket number. 55. In regards to. Inbound call. Is. Open. So, the same agent. Um, just received uh, a phone call uh, as, lo as long as the chat and uh, um, it's possible uh, actually the, I have two interactions I have two tickets open and as I mentioned before uh, when I switch between those interactions the last open tickets on the UI also also changes one other thing that happens is uh, uh, when I terminated the, 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 the conversation and um, let me go and disposition it. Um, the uh, recording of that um, conversation is placed into the ticket. And in addition to that, if I uh, terminate the chat conversation, oh, let me go here. Um, Uh, both the disposition and the chat transcript actually appears on the ticket as well, uh, along with the link to um, access of the whole history in in Bright Pattern Contact Center. Moreover, um, after each of those conversations, we can collect the surveys, and those surveys um, we we collect three most important questions: is whether the uh, service was provided, whether they received the help they wanted. How helpful was the representative, and what's the overall feeling about the company? And you could receive the transcript. The same thing is possible to do over uh, uh, other channels as well. And we we keep this um, available across the channels. Now um, it's also possible to go and uh, uh, access all of that information through uh, reporting UI, and that that could be uh, scheduled reports that that we provide out of the box, or it could be any um, uh, reporting tool such as, for example, an um, uh, Amazon QuickSight that I'm using right now to access the data. So I can go and take my agent handle time and, for example, go and uh, slice it by uh, uh, media type and see how much time I spend in my demo uh, environment across a specific channel. I can also go and um, uh, put it by request category and for example go and focus on things like show to show only chat so um, it's end to end and it's it's multi channel and can uh, get business insight business insight on, on where your agent time is spent um, starting with uh, the media and uh, going into a, a request category so uh, that said, um, I'm uh, done with the demo, and uh, Shelby, could you please? Yeah, if you want to stop sharing my screen, I can get back to the slides. And um, next up, we can go through some uh, Q&A. It looks like we did get some Q&A from the audience. And as we go through some of these questions, you can feel free to submit more through the Zoom panel. Um, but the first question um, I have here, um, one of the attendees is wondering, what are some newer emerging channels in the contact center space? Sergey, do you want to start off by answering that? Well, um, 
the the, the most vol volatile uh, part of the channels is is uh, messaging apps they they appear and disappear they become very popular or not but uh, in reality um, all the channels the 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 omnichannel contact center is just a smartphone for, for organizations. So any channel you can think of uh, that you use to communicate with your friends and family uh, on your smartphone is, is something that has to be supported by a contact center. So um, um, that said, the perennial channels would be voice, uh, SMS, and, and web chat, and they're, they're here to stay. And the most volatility will be in messaging apps, I think. Shelby? Okay, great. And maybe to our customers, um, Sean, are there any new channels that you're planning on adding in or, or were there any recently? Uh, we've recently added the ability to do uh, SMS since we are a, a uh, cellular company. So we, we've been doing tests for a long time, giving members the ability to, to dial 611, which is originally for calling your carrier. We actually allow them to text to 611 and ask questions or, or if, in fact, it, it connects with our chat and allows them to talk. Uh, talk, but I would say also I would agree that with Sergey that um, messaging, uh, we're constantly asked for different messaging apps. Uh, so from Facebook Messenger, but pr pretty much any time, think of any of the different social tools or any of those tools that are out there. If there's a private conversation going on, um, that's kind of a one-to-one -one discussion. Those one-to-one -one discussions for us um, need to be something that we can API and connect into our systems. Uh, we need to, one, be able to validate that the person we're talking to is actually authorized to talk to us uh, or to, to work on their account. So there's all the security side of that. But once all that's satisfied, getting them in and getting it memorialized into a ticket so that we can keep track of everything that's going on and make it part of our omni-channel, that's, that's the social tools that we'll look at. And then, of course, demand. Great. Thanks, Sean. And Roger, you work with a lot of really innovative customers. The end users are pretty demanding with their channels, it seems like. Um, are they asking for any specific channels that are kind of new to your contact center? I'd say that I um, agree with Sergey that the messaging and social media in general is, is escalating more in uh, tech support. More is a tech support thing where it used to be more of just a customer care thing where now more tech support is occurring over the different social media channels, um, and SMS is, is a growing channel as well. Great. Okay, the next question we have, um, how do you see AI and bots changing the omni-channel landscape? Um, I'll kick that okay. over to uh, Sergey as well. So, uh, first of all, um, uh, there, there's a couple of applications of AI. For, the first would be um, the natural language understanding, and that really helps in chat channels and any kind of text messaging channels. And the reason being uh, that we move from um, IVR uh, approach when you present the options and then uh, let customer choose. And we just uh, ask them, what would you like to do? And uh, try to understand what they want. And this gives much better picture on what customers are actually caring about, not trying to define this kind of thing. And the second approach is, uh, as Emily mentioned, the, uh, the, the bots that uh, go and, and run through the knowledge base and present the articles uh, that, that are fitting to what uh, a customer just asked about, that's also pretty huge. Okay, great. And I mean, are, are any of our Bright Pattern customers currently using these technologies? And if so, can you let me know, is there like specific industries that are more prone to use it or specific like company size? Is it only the bigger enterprise companies that are using this type of technology? Well, we uh, integrate with uh, a number of bots and the simplest to, to start with would be probably IBM Watson Assistant uh, from early conversations. It's a pretty easy interface uh, to draw your own bots and uh, also see what customers are asking it. And that, that's, provide, that's pretty easy to start with. It's not very expensive. Uh, it provides sentiment analysis also out of the box. Out of the box. Shelby, we have a pretty exciting use case um, at Zendesk um, with our AI answer bot. Um, uh, one of our customers, Dollar Shave Club, the subscription-based grooming solution, um, they've used AnswerBot to, um, to, 
to relieve their agents some, of some of the more basic repetitive tasks that took up a disproportionate amount of time. Um, so that's been a really exciting use case. They've seen um, since they implemented AnswerBot in the fall, about uh, over, almost 5,000 average monthly tickets have been solved by AnswerBot, which as Sergey mentioned, kind of co will comb through the knowledge base to present the um, most applicable um, answer for, for customers. Um, and they've seen a nine minute average full resolution time for answer bot. So in the same theme of really empowering agents to focus on, you know, those higher um, complexity solutions, answer bot has, has helped um, companies like Dollar Shave Club um, to, to help their agents be more effective in other channels. Very cool. That's a great use case. And that, it kind of ties back to one of our tips of empowering agents as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you put that bot um, as handling some of the easier interactions, it allows agents to kind of work through some of the tougher use cases and they usually feel a lot more engaged in doing so. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They definitely are seeing as one of their biggest benefits of Android bot is just the increased bandwidth of their support agents. Like you said to, um, you know, to work on tasks that feel more worthy of their time. So, yeah. Great, that's very cool. Um, so the next question I have is aimed more towards um, Bright Patterns omni-channel software. Um, they're asking if you can switch between channels. Sergey? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, at any time uh, you, you on the chat, you can start a telephone call or you could even chat, switch chat channels such as uh, uh, going on 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 web chat you can go and switch to sms for example if, if a customer has to go and you want to continue conversation and in the same way if you're uh, talking and you're entering uh, uh, boarding a train you really don't want to continue the conversation you could do the same thing switch to chat so it's it's absolutely possible Great, that's good to know. And I mean, even going off of some of the AI and bot questioning here, um, is it easy to escalate from a bot to an agent as well? Yeah, and uh, uh, we do it. Uh, actually, that what, what happened in my demo, it's uh, the first, uh, it was handled by bot, and then it uh, passed the conversation to agent. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Another attendee is asking if we can speak a little bit on reporting best practices, um, just because I'm assuming they're wanting to know with omnichannel, um, does that make it more difficult to report? Kind of how, how do you guys recommend reporting around omnichannel? Well, there, there are some things that are uh, uh, definitely important across channels. So, for example, how much time agents spend on a specific issue, uh, this this is pretty much uh, same across all of the channels. But um, uh, trying to, for example, um, focus on uh, handle time and try to compare handle time of email with handle time of a telephone call, that's probably not appropriate. So it makes sense to separate those. Uh, um, shall we? Mm -hmm. Great. So I have a couple of questions. These ones are aimed more towards Sean and Roger, our customers, and kind of how they're actually putting this technology to use. So um, the question is, do you separate your agents by channel? And for that one, we can start with Sean. Um, a little bit. I could say uh, definitively a little bit. Uh, sometimes uh, more, more by skill. Uh, so not every agent has the chat skill. Um, we'd like to memorialize everything we can into tickets. So they're all working pretty much from the same place, but we also have our social team, which is usually greeting and then they use a different tool to push everything in once again to tickets when it becomes more private uh, conversations and the same thing with uh, community and other things. So. Uh, while we have different groups that specialize in different areas, um, in the end, when it becomes when it becomes a private conversation that talks about real account information or, or calling information with CPNI, uh, pretty much gets back down to the same team. We try and funnel it to the same team that's able to to solve the problem. Great. And Roger, how about at TrueSource? Uh, at TrueSource, we do it uh, both ways, depending on you know if there's on the smaller groups. You know, the Omni Channel allows us to be more nimble. Um, and basically require less resources to handle the same amount of volume 
um, by kind of keeping them all in one queue, so to speak, um, so they can switch back and forth between, you know, chat or voice call or, or SMS. Even the larger groups um, where, you know, the volume might dictate that you want to dedicate resources to chat, uh, we would still maybe only dedicate 80 to 90 percent of resources required for chat and then use the omni channel uh, to fill it out so we can get the best occupancy uh, between the agents as well as the, the client and then the business mm -hmm. great and this last question is for you guys as well it's can you expand on how you train agents for omni channel sean do you want to explain a little bit is it different than maybe if you weren't using omni channel uh, yes, of course, it's different, uh, different as far, uh, especially with uh, chat um, and social, where you may have a shorter, it's a very different kind of response, maybe in shorter, uh, you know, shorter bits of information when you're responding in a ticket or an email, um, you can write more in longer form. Uh, so we feel that, that the training in, in short form communication, training um, in understanding and being able to convey your, your um, you know, your understanding through that. We've had way too many times where we're accused of being bots and, and, and we're not. We over, we over format and we utilize too many macros. So we spend our time really writing out answers. Uh, and, we, and in doing that, uh, you really have to train and make sure that everybody's good at writing, of course, for KCS and all that. So uh, is our, everybody's articulate, but we also have to make sure that, that it's, it's human and real and it's different for every every channel that you work in as to how you can communicate in that channel or how you should communicate in that channel. So we train for that extensively. Great, thanks, Sean. And Roger, how do you train a, a true source? I think it's very similar in that regard. You know, there's there's training that's kind of specific to the handling, you know, specific to the channel as far as communication styles, the how you ask questions, how you follow up, um, you know, paying attention to the answers from a, a chat question. Uh, versus how you follow up on an answer from you know a voice call, for instance. Um, training wise on the the tools, since the interface is very consistent, that makes that part of the training uh, pretty seamless. Great, great. Well, that's all the questions we have, um, Sean and Roger. I want to go ahead and thank you for sharing those unique use cases um, with us today. And Sergey and Emily, thanks for providing your expert point of views on these tips. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks. Thanks, Sean Roger. Yep. Everybody. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.